Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for the Town of Halifax for February 9th, 2021. And as is our usual case, we are being uh, available to participate in that way. We're going to start the evening as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Garen, would you like to start off for us? Oh, never mind. Hold on. We're going to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we can move on to the minutes. Regular session for January 12th, January 21st, January 28th, January 12th, January 26th, and January 28th. Pam has been very busy. I'll move all but January 28th. Second. All those in favor for all except January 28th? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Can I get a motion for January 28th? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All I those. recuse. Mr. Andrews recuses. Now we can move on to Mr. Garrett. I move to affirm the approval of the following warrants and commit commitments. Payroll warrant number 74 for $393,086.25. I, I can second all except for internally 1816, 1817, 1820, and 1830. All those in favor for the payroll warrant except for 1816, 1817, 1820, and 1830? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'll move the payroll warrants 1816, 1817, 1820, and 1830. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Recuse. One recusal. Withholding warrant number 78, I'm sorry, vendor warrant for 75, number 75 for $238,967.77. I second with an abstention on 1852. All those in favor for the vendor warrant with the exception of 1852, please. Aye. 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 I'll move vendor warrant number 1852. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Recuse. One recusal. Withholding warrant number 76 for $142,018.00. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. School warrant number 77 for $220,003.24. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ambulance commitment from 118.21 to 124.21, $49,936.91. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Ambulance commitments from 125 through 131 for $30,796.87. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to pay mm -hmm. KP Law PC Legend Legal January for $1,269 and Attorney Lawrence Mayo Legal for January $1,437.50. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Recuse. One recusal. I'd like to move the approval around the commitments for vendor warrant number 79 for $58,110.14. Uh, I'll second except for the internals 1905 and 1906. Those are the legal bills. With the exception of 1905 and 1906, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll move 1905 and 1906. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Recuse. One recusal. 
Mogul Home Park fee number two for $5,160. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Does that bring us to the selectmen? Oh, that was the selectmen. Selectmen's bills. Town Hall Electricity, $1,601.27. Insurance, $289. Stuckman's expense account, $13.36. Stuckman's expense account, $24.77. South Shore Women's Center, $3,500. Law account $72.15. I'm sorry, $72.10. And that completes the presentation. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. General Mayor, we're going to move on to Mr. Seelig. Um, we're not going to be meeting on Thursday because two of you won't be here. I, um, Troy has another obligation and Tom will not be available either. So just very briefly on COVID, um, cases are down during the past 14 days, although there were six today. The state's encouraging the mass vaccination sites rather than local sites. They think they're more efficient. Um, I know they're hearing from a number of communities, not just us um, and not just South Shore because I was on a um, webinar with the MMA early this afternoon and there were plenty of people from plenty of parts of the state really saying, look, we're set up, we're ready to go. Just get us the vaccines, just don't rely on Foxborough, for instance, and other the large ones. Um, but Bob Valeri was hearing the same thing later in the afternoon from the Mass or um, Department of Public Health. So we'll see whether, um, I, mean, I know that Jason and Bob and Susan have been working very hard on getting our 75 plus, but they're going to be about set up by the end of this week in the sense of everybody who wants to be vaccinated probably will have been vaccinated here in Halifax for 75 and up. They've worked very hard to get the word out to people via robocalls and everything else, um, getting transportation if they need it. So uh, I know that Jason's working with Kingston and Plimpton, trying to set up a regional um, center We'll see how everything works, but everybody's on board to do something if the crucial thing is getting the vaccines. Um, legal no report, pictures in the selectmen's meeting room. Um, we've distributed two of them. The old Halifax picture map has gone over to the library and to the police station. We had received a Renaissance Award 20 some odd years ago when the center school was redone as the police station. So that's gone to the police station. Um, the question is, we still got to check at least two um, objects to distribute if um, other departments, for instance, might want them. Pam, was there anybody else who was interested in? Yeah. Um, like I said, um, we had talked about me hauling the other girls on something when we were in the area shop in the lobby somewhere. I think there was a couple slot walls. I got where the elevator was right there, so maybe put that one there. But the one that Lou was holding. This, this is the rededic rededication of the newly renovated and extended town hall and the restoration of the historic Hope's Town building yeah. for use by the Council on Aging and Historical Society. Maybe that should go over there. Yeah, I was just going to suggest oh, yeah. that myself, the oh, Council on Aging at the Pope's Tavern. Okay. We've asked them if they have a spot for it, if they're interested in it. Oh, it it's, it's old enough that even the signatures have faded out on this. <laughs> yeah, it's... 35 or so years yeah, old. Yeah, 1987. Yeah. So, well, so she still wants to take that over. Yeah, she, she uh, thinks that they may have some use for it over there. I agree. Did that work for you guys? Yeah. yeah. And then the other one we will um, find that I will get in the other hand. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We'll hang up the other one. Okay. Command hooks. 
factors. Oh, okay. that's true. Yeah, that's um, Cultural Council recommending appointment of Colleen Fioramura as a for a term expiring on February 8th, 2024. That would give us four people on there. I'm going to see if I can find a fifth person in the building because I'm running out of time to have a meeting and award the grants. We have more than enough money for all the uh, applications, so it's not, it will take about five minutes, but I'll find somebody and see about getting them appointed. Okay. Okay. But if the board would vote, um, someone to make a and motion to appoint Colleen Fumara to a term on the Cultural Council expiring on February 8th, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you, Colleen. Yes. Um, Frank Dodaro will be in a little bit later, supposedly in a couple of minutes, uh, to talk about the T box and possibly an expansion of the license. Um, just pass over on Mr. Nazarella and uh, ethics disclosures. I don't have any paperwork from him. Uh, Finance Committee appointments. Joseph Entrano is to meet with the board on. February 23rd, he wasn't able to come in tonight. He did with the meet with the FinCom and they didn't scare him enough, so he'll come in on the 23rd. Uh, Deborah Pasquale <coughs> is to meet with the FinCom on the 22nd. Um, if the selectman while I can set up an appointment for her to meet with the selectman on the 23rd also. Is that uh, sure. reasonable? I'm sorry. Deborah Pasquale. For fin For FinCom. FinCom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll get that yeah. set up. Um, Green Earth Cannabis just finally got the uh, draft done, which was following what the board's directive was, which was to take the Bud's Goods uh, HCA, do the cut and paste to change over to green cannabis, but also to change the establishment from one that was doing cultivation and manufacturing to one that was doing retail. I've sent that off today finally. Um, we'll wait back to get a reply, you know, red line draft based on that starting point. Good, thank you for doing that uh, in, in amongst everything yeah. else we've got to do. Uh, Gatra affiliation, I don't have a report, I have to work on that. Zoning and floodplain, FEMA is requiring an update to the town section of the zoning bylaw related to floodplains. I've given each of you a copy of the revised floodplain section. Uh, I'm recommending it be submitted to the planning board for a hearing and subsequent recommendation to town meeting in May. We sure. need to get that done by July. Is that the same map as last year that we passed over because of the yes. issues? No changes to that? Okay. Do you need a motion? Yes. Move we it. Get a motion? I move it. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Unanimous. Um, wage and personnel bylaw update. I've submitted a request to the other nine communities in our 10 towns for pay scales and job descriptions for the groups, uh, grade six and seven positions. I need to send out a similar note about the clothing allowance for the Board of Health agent. I need to work on options for dealing with the incongruities in grades 11 through 14 and also the increases in minimum wage for Massachusetts and then also the proposed changes for compensation for the fire department call personnel. The Board does need to decide how it wants to meet with the FinCom during the next two months to discuss these proposals and any others. I mean, you're, you're going to have to have at some point some joint meetings, whether it's members of the board visiting FinCom or the FinCom coming to a selectman's meeting. But I know, you know, I don't want FinCom to feel that they're out there, or you all for that matter, hanging out there by yourselves trying to work all this out. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, they are meeting next Monday. They are meeting the 22nd. I can talk with them and say, you know, let's put this on the agenda. I'll specifically post for the board. You know, whoever can come, when they do a Zoom meeting, um, whoever can come and we can start the discussions on those areas. Maybe I'll have some information on some of these subjects by then. Yeah, Could I that think the 22nd is a good idea. Okay. Gentlemen? It's a good day for me. Okay. 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 Good, good. Thank um, Area 58, we're going to talk to Richard Goulart um, in a little while. Um, and we are at 6.45. Mr. Dodaro. Perfect timing. Good evening, everyone. Good Is the evening. mic on? Uh, it looks like it's on. Is it on? Oh, for, no. Richard. Richard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have you at 6.45. Dodaro's at 7. Right. Sorry. I had my okay. reversed. Yeah. Yes. No, no you're we're okay. good. Good. Good evening. How are you all? Good. Good. How are you? So uh, I came, wanted to come to talk more or to uh, give you an update on where things are regarding the uh, contract. I guess you guys wanted to speak to me as well. So uh, we, uh, Carver is just about ready to sign their next 10-year contract with Comcast. 
Uh, it has to go before the selectmen, at which point they will uh, decide whether or not they're going to uh, approve it. The contract will uh, increase the percentage in Carver from 4.5% to the maximum of 5%. And also for the first time in Carver's history, as far as I know, um, and as far as Ron knows, so probably the first time in history other than startup capital, uh, we'll be getting uh, an annual capital amount from Comcast as well. <coughs> uh, in the amount of $20,000 for the 10 year period. Exclusive of what they're charging subscribers? It's a separate thing entirely, yes. Yep. Um, the uh, Tri-Town contract is uh, Halifax currently, uh, sorry, Carver currently is having it looked at by KNP Law to uh, see if there's anything that needs to be revised or basically to make sure that everything is, uh, all the I's are dotted and the T's crossed at this point. Um, they can share that with you or you can also take a look at it obviously. Richard, um, probably the best thing is if they've got a draft or whatever when it's available, yeah, if it could be us. sent to me and I can send it to the board. Fantastic. And also I can the make cable sure advisory happens. folks, or you know, I want to make sure the Halifax members all see it. Okay, absolutely. Uh, I did speak with Plimpton for the first time last night. Uh, their meeting was via Zoom. Um, and uh, they seem, they had a couple concerns here and there, things that uh, basically operational things. Uh, the website had been down over the weekend. It's been migrated to a new um, hosting site. So that problem should be solved. Um, while I was speaking with them, I also wanted to n let them know that if we are hosting the Zoom, and hosting the Zoom basically means that we're the host, create the link, and then send you along the link and can make one of you the co-host, we can cablecast the meetings live on channel 15 in town, as opposed to just waiting for the uh, tape or watching it via Zoom. Additionally, um, there may be a change. We've got to, we've got to have a... Uh, either an internet connection here or a um, mobile hotspot. But with that, technology has advanced to the point where we could have the, the Halifax Selectman meetings live even from here. Now, will that cost any extra over and above the contract? It, it wouldn't charge, it would be part of what we use the money we get to make it happen. So it wouldn't affect the town any further than that. Um, Beyond that, um, the opening for the uh, board of directors has potentially been filled. I guess he still hasn't come before you. Um, the, the two Halifax representatives were comfortable with the person. His name is John Hansen. He grew up in Halifax. I forget what street. Um, but he will be coming before you uh, in the near future. He actually, uh, many times in the past, particularly when we were in the, uh, able to hold the meetings in the Selectman meeting room, was uh, one of the videographers who uh, had filmed this stuff for you. So he is familiar with the operation and is interested in uh, serving in that capacity. Um, the only other thing I have on my end is, Um, oh, we have been having some trouble getting um, the recorded videos from Halifax Elementary School and also Silver Lake. So I don't know if uh, there's anyone you could reach out to to help us get the link. Again, we could potentially host the Zoom and then put them live on the channel for those as well. Uh, the one additional thing is we just increased our number of Zoom accounts and now have a large meeting option so we could host up to 500 people. Now, I doubt we're ever going to see that in Halifax and it would take the entire population of Plimpton, but beyond that, it's just, it does give us more flexibility in doing things, particularly if there was a, a contentious school committee meeting, as sometimes those seem to be happening right now. It would afford us the ability to allow that many people to zoom in and that would uh, be positive for the town. Currently, right now, the school setup is to use Google Meets, so I've got to figure out how to get you those files from Google okay. Drive, I guess. I am 95% certain that even Google Meets we could put on the channel live. It's really just a matter of, I mean, I'd have to look into it because we haven't done Google Meets. It's really just a matter of sending the signal, which only the host can do in Zoom, 
to the channel as well as recording it and sending it out via the internet. So it's, it's worked out pretty well for, uh, so far only Carver has taken advantage of it, um, but they also were used to seeing meetings live, which neither of the other two towns have been used to. The one that gains the most advantage from this in some ways is Plimpton because Plimpton doesn't have a live drop. So theoretically we could hook up and actually go live potentially from the meeting room downstairs and a couple other locations in Halifax if we ever wanted to. There's a way of making that happen. It may take a little work to get Comcast to actually get things in place or, or not so much in place but opened up. There's no such thing in Plimpton. So this is really the first time there's even an option for them to go live is with this now being in the technology having advanced. Um, I'll answer any questions you have. I, I'm just curious, um, do we track YouTube hits or is there a way to track YouTube hits? Well, YouTube counts. If you go to the actual video. You can see it on there. Yeah, so for instance, we don't get a million people watching our meeting. Yeah, we I would get, think so. We, we might get 25. Okay. Right. Yeah, but it's all there. I mean, if you go to the Area 58 Halifax where it lists all the videos, in fact, you don't have to go to the individual ones. It will say how many people have viewed the planning board from last Thursday or the ZBA, well, that isn't up yet from last night, for instance. Obviously, I haven't done it because I didn't want to relive any of them, but uh, I, I just wanted to be. Yeah, I mean, if we get three digits on any of them, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. I'm I just mean, curious if there was any. Yeah, if we get you know you more, more than a couple dozen probably is more than usual. So, but yeah, I mean, so what it is is another way for people for people who don't have cable but do have Comcast for or another internet provider. That's a way for them to be able to see it. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to get into my right. I understand my my usual dissertation about uh, subscribers paying for it. So. Anybody else? Anybody have a question? There, there was a question from someone on the Zoom that asked about adding conservation and other meetings to the ability to record. Just didn't know. Yeah, uh, either with us hosting them or someone there hosting them. Obviously, we can't go live with them unless we're the host. And they can't go live to the channel if there's more than one thing at the same time. But uh, we certainly can help them out, and if we, they want us to host them, we can still do that even without them going live and therefore have them, or they can record them and then send them to us, and we'll get them on the channel and on YouTube as well. Are, are we still rationed on how many live recordings we can do? No, at this point, no. I mean, if in person it would come back to that more, but in this case, no. Okay. So let's walk through, I mean, there's maybe, you know, we do ZBA, we do planning right now. Right. We do the school committee, we do finance. Uh, selectmen. So we're left with Board of Health and CONCOM. CONCOM is downstairs. They're meeting right now, in fact, I believe. In, in, uh, our, in our meeting room. In our meeting so room, which means they, set up. You could ha if we had a second person downstairs yes. doing the tape, then yep. we could do that one. Board of Health meets here on Alton, usually, I don't know if it's first and third or second and fourth Wednesday nights. So they're using this room. Again, the camera's already set up the soundboard, so it certainly would be doable. Yeah, we can definitely do it. I mean, I think the likelihood is, until this all comes through anyway, we're not going to approach the 150 at 150, whatever number it is. I think it's 130, actually. We're not going to approach it anyway, and if it's necessary, we'll do it regardless, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's what I was getting at, because I knew at one time there was only so many rationed out per town. For there, there are, but we've never held that as a, a hard cap. If something needed to be covered, we did it, um, and there was no further... Um, I don't know, Tom, it feels like we had 130 meetings ourselves this past year. Yeah, it, it does, doesn't it? It does at times, yeah. So if, if the selectmen said, yes, we'd like to do this, and mind you, technically they're public meetings, but it would be helpful to have the Board of Health and the CONCOM say, yes, yeah. we want to be a part of this, um, what would be the process of getting them into the schedule? Just letting me know, and I'll make sure we'll, we'll get someone here. Um, be it staff or one of our videographers. Um, honestly, we are we, we're more than welcome and more than pleased to, to cover any of the meetings the town has to uh, help with the transparency and also in, uh, inform the people. It's our, really our mission, so it's not a problem. We actually uh, would look forward to doing so. Well, that's good, especially now where people are reluctant to get out mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Fortune. Anything else? Mr. Hanson, he lives in Hanson. 
other than uh, Carver? No, J John Hanson. Yes, John Hanson. He lives in Hanson? No, he lives in Halifax, I think you said, right? He grew up in Halifax. Oh, he he actually lives currently in Carver. Okay. Well, but, but he'd be the Halifax representative? That's the, the current plan, yeah, because Cal Carver is all filled up and he would, I mean, it would be, again, it would be up to you guys to, to uh, well, accept I think what, it. Yeah, I, I, I would I, think I, that the board might want to advertise the fact that we have the vacancy okay. and see who else might be interested. Yeah. Yes, I know that uh, from Halifax, for instance. Yeah, Dick and John have been trying to get some people for a while, Dick Wright and John Chabon, and have had no real success. Okay. Well, I'll advertise for a couple I, weeks. We'll see what we get. I, okay. I agree. If, I mean, it would be preferable to have somebody from Halifax than from another town. No aspersions on any other town other than to represent no, that our make, own that town. That absolutely makes sense. Okay, so let's try that. Okay. Yeah. Advertise it for a couple of weeks, and yeah. if he doesn't, ask him to just meet with us. And yeah, and then see how that works out. Okay. Perfect. Very right. good. I did have one question just about the contract aspect. Do you foresee any changes in, within the next cycle of being able to include the internet aspect of the bill to the fee? Because everyone's dropping. Hey, that's not his barely work. That, no, is that come on a uh, we have, cable yeah, contract? So, okay. Right. So what we. We didn't do this because of COVID last spring, but on an annual basis, the board can hold a hearing with someone from Comcast to come in. Okay. And that's when they okay. bring up exactly what you're saying. Yeah, that's what we, yeah. All right, thanks, Joe. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, Richard does many things, but he's not responsible for the bills. <laughs> no, I'm not, and I wish I was sometimes, believe me. Uh -huh. Well, the dynamic's changing anyway. A lot of people are dropping the uh, cable aspect. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Everybody's starting to stream. I'm even looking at it uh, at this point, because uh, of content as much as anything, but we have sure to make our meeting the more interesting. Yeah. The, the biggest thing, uh, it's one of the things that's a problem for us as well in the future is because uh, in a 1994 federal decision, I believe, we don't get any revenue directly from the uh, internet. The only thing we get is the cable TV part, so if that goes away, so does our primary revenue source. Um, the one thing Comcast is doing to try and remedy that is by making their platform easy access to all of the different streaming services as they well. They are doing that, and that, yep. that, that would be the only reason I might consider keeping it, to be honest with you, because then mm -hmm. I don't have to switch to a million different remotes yep. and everything else. You are not alone in that, yeah. and that's one of the things. Beyond that, uh, for Halifax, Plimpton, and Carver, Fios uh, is not going to be an option. Uh, no. We've talked to them several times, and uh, Verizon has no interest in communities of that size at this point. And behind the scenes, to some degree, have clearly stated they're getting their plan is to get out of the television business anyway. Um, they want wireless. That's all they care about. Yeah, and, and they've got you know the huge. Um, they've got another money stream that they always were part of, whereas Comcast really has relied on the television side. So right. the one big difference we're seeing is Verizon is only offering five-year contracts to anyone they're renewing with for the cable access people, whereas Comcast is still going with the 10-year contracts. The thing with Fios, even when Verizon was pushing Fios, they wanted high density. They weren't looking for rural areas where they had to service a lot of poles to get very right. few subscribers. So, Although it does run through Halifax to Plymouth. Which is kind of weird, but Mr. Chair, yes, sir. Oh, yes, the clock. Thank you, Mr. Garen. If there's no other questions, I think we're good. You're good. Yeah, I am. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for updating us. Very much appreciated, and uh, we will look forward to getting a copy of that contract so we can take a look at it. Yes, yeah, as soon as I have it, I'll get it to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It is now 7 o'clock, as Mr. Curran <coughs> reminded me, and we have an appointment with Frank Dodero. Did I yes. say that right? That is correct. Ah, there's once. All right, great. Uh, that's actually one that people don't get right, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, John, just, I, you'll, you'll want to get very close to that mic. No problem at all. <coughs> you, can pull, you can move it towards you. Oh, okay, yeah, I wasn't going to touch anything if I don't have to. I was trying to try to give myself some uh, space there. Um, what I'll be uh, wanting to discuss is I've already um, spoke to Charlie about this over 
uh, email is uh, I am the owner of the T box in Halifax, the uh, indoor golf facility bar. And now because of the COVID, we've had to transform into a restaurant uh, because of the pandemic. So now we have a full food license and food service place. And um, I, you know, where where we've been in business for I think this is our 12th year. And one thing we're finding is due to the golf limitations we have, uh, our facility is uh, very limited business time-wise. Meaning we, uh, we're very busy December through March, April, depending on the weather. <laughs> and after that, we're, we have nothing going on. Uh, once in a while we'll have a, a rainy day where people will come and play or we'll have something going on. But because of the way we've been having to expand with our business over the years, we now have a full service bar, we have a full service food uh, menu. And I was, I was uh, hoping to find out if, um, well actually I was wondering what it would take to expand to, uh, to the parking lot outdoors and have something that would be more of a beer garden type thing for the summer months only. I couldn't really do it during the winter when it's cold. I was thinking more late spring, summer. Uh, but we, uh, so I, I asked Charlie on Friday basically if, uh, what would it take to get that ball rolling and hit one, his first uh, step was an informal discussion on the requirements before we even have a formal request or anything like that. My, my my first thought would be, how does this comply with ABC requirements? Do do we have you had an opportunity? Well, when I that? when I contacted the ABCC, they saw this as a separate license because the two spaces are connected. Unlike the COVID situation for Grill 58, for instance, where their outdoor patio, whatever you want to call it, in the parking lot, was directly adjacent to the restaurant and specifically allowed under COVID. This is a different situation, second floor versus first floor, inside versus outside. Doesn't mean that you should not apply, right. but admit, you know. Yeah, I, I think there'll be some challenges with the ABCC first. I'm, and if we do need a separate license, we can see if we can go that route, have to go that route. It'd be the same. I don't even know if they allow uh, two licenses on the same property. Uh, it's, I mean, there's yeah, some regulations there. Mm -hmm. But also I could have a, some informal discussions and say, you know, I give them examples of other places where they have separated alcohol from, I mean, two separate bars. So, I mean, I think it'd be, the, it, I think um, it would be a little, where it's upstairs and downstairs, there might be, have to be a discussion to show them why it has to be that way. And the uh, advantage I would say we'd have in that discussion is our upstairs won't be being used that much just for, you know, our, our services. The, uh, during the summer, when, when, when one's active, the other won't be, almost. Right. But the other will be used, it just won't be, there'll only be one service area through one period of time. So, I, we'll I see. imagine during the summer months, you know, you're getting use on bad weather days, that, that type of thing, right? Yeah, the, the, uh, I mean, once in a while, I mean, I, I, our, our sales go from, we rent out traditionally uh, somewhere around probably 50 to 60 hours a day when it's busy during the winter, and then when it's when it's not busy during the winter, I mean, in our primary days, to 20 hours a day, and then in the summer months, the average is one hour, yeah. hour a week, two hours a week. I mean, it's a big Understandable. difference. Yeah. The, the other question that comes to mind is, uh, you should also talk to the planning board. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, um, I actually contacted the. Uh, Board of Health and asked for a, an outline of who I should be talking to. Yep. And after you, the selectmen, all of the selectmen here, the question, the next was zoning. Uh, the, we didn't even get to the Board of Health and the um, fire until everything's set up. First, we have to get approval before we can even do that. He actually, um, uh, the gentleman, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but uh, he, he laid out a really nice uh, outline of what I'll have to do. Yeah. Yes, he, he laid a real nice outline of what I'd have to do. So this is where, this is the first step was yeah. just, even if it's, it, you know, what, what, um, what steps would you like to see taken first before I come in front of you and ask before? But I mean, obviously the ABCC is the most important because yeah, we have you, to make sure. The Board of Health, you already alluded to, but, but planning board is going to be an important element in this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Parking, as I recall, was an issue in terms of spaces and I think they kind of squeaked them in and I think some of them are getting used up now with the outdoor thing. So so I'm not saying that they won't get no, you, understandable. You know, work with you. I'm just saying that that's an area. Or they can even just let me know what the requirements are and if we meet them. Right. Where, are you, where are you thinking of uh, having a... Sure. Uh, I actually... Is it okay? I, I yeah. got kind of a... Uh, I, uh, it's going to be on the opposite side of the road. 
uh, because that's where our allocation is. We were actually there right in the beginning. Uh, so we'll get the eight, and this is more of a, about right next to our entrance, and there's a grassy knoll for lack of a better term. Right now. Grassy knoll, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we have a grass location. But, uh, so you're selling shots, is what uh, you're saying. Uh, selling shots. Actually, yeah. I don't know about shots. I was going to compare the new liquor menu. I really want it to be more of a draft beer than I guess, but with food. Real, uh, because our menu now consists of hot dogs, popcorn, and things like that. I want to expand on that. Um, eventually, I would like it if uh, I could even have a you know, more of a, I want it to be daytime only thing. Really nothing at night is my, I mean, maybe no later than eight, nine o'clock, but I don't want it to be anything at night. Cause I need it to be, I need it to be kind of small just by the way it is. So I don't see why, I don't want it to be a, a hundred person place where everybody's hanging out. This is kind of over by the flagpole, right? Yes, right near the flagpole. Right near the, uh, we, we'd actually have use of, I have an end with the, uh, with the owners of the building since he's my father. Okay. So I can, uh, I can use the garage without an issue, uh, which actually would be a good power source and place to put the bathrooms and things like that. So I guess my question would be zoning, would, you're taking up parking spaces, would that not eliminate them of being, in, being right? Yeah, that's why I brought up the planning board, because that's really where that's well, going to get taken I do of. think the nice part about where that is, is <clears throat> I would be taking up the parking spaces that would currently very rarely get used except for when um, the liquor store is really busy. That was the, that was the good, so we, I mean, we can obviously go through the numbers, yeah. but the, um, that parking space in front of the, uh, the top yellow circle, I, those get, uh, those are not the most uh, ideal place. Actually, people don't like to park there. Well, some of, your, some of the parking spaces may have now have designation for the tee box that you're not going to use in the months that you're running. Exactly. Anyway. Yep. And that's something, you know, to bring up to the planning. Yep, board. exactly, because it's, uh, it, it's the same business. They'll just be using them. It will, it, you know, we'll just be using them for a different spot. Downstairs, downstairs, yeah. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate that insight. But, uh, yeah, more, I mean, I've done preliminary cost you know, cost vetting and things like that. I really, I mean, I'm going to have an issue with anyways where, um, with bathrooms. So that was, I, I, that's going to be a big hurdle to get over. So I don't even, I don't know what the rules are going to be. I don't know where, uh, where I can get them from and all those kind of things. So there's still a lot where I am. I just wanted to know what, you, what your thoughts, what your gentleman's thoughts were on where I, sh where I should go directionally. Well, I don't think you're under special permit, so I don't think you need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but definitely the Planning Board. Board okay. of Health is a given. Um, and, and then, you know, fire. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the yeah, fire and health, obviously. Now, are you looking to put up tents? Are you looking to put up a building? What are you looking I, to do? My initial thoughts, I'm trying to start out small. Uh, umbrellas in the beginning uh, with picnic tables and um, rainy weather, we just won't open. Uh, it's really just going to be dependent on the weather. Um, it, it, maybe we can grow to a tent someday or an overhead thing, but I'm, I haven't quite. I think I want to. I want to have it have the ability to put everything into a shed or a container that actually will be the service area. Pull it out. I mean, leave the picnic tables out, obviously, but you know, all the equipment open up and only be. And I'm only really looking for business Thursday through Sunday. I don't really want to be. I don't want it to be a, 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 a seven day a week hangout. I really want it to be something that's nice on the weekend. People can come by if it's a nice day and something to do. Something, something to do. And I think we're we're. Um, I think we're at an advantage with the current pandemic because if we open up under those rules, it'll be kind of restrictive anyways. So we'll all, it'll almost be like, well, if we can't fit somebody in, people are getting used to being moved around a little. So I actually am trying to use that to our advantage there. Depending on what you're trying to do for structures and or whatever for rolling out your mm -hmm. service, or you, you might just to make sure that there's no uh, crossover, talk to the building inspector. Yep. Right. I, I don't. It doesn't sound like you've got any building issues, but depending on how you actually do it, you might want to just bounce it off them. Not a problem. Because uh, I never heard for a phone call just to make sure that they would, he he might be able to, you know say no, you're fine, don't worry about it, or this is what I need you to do. Right. Anything else, anybody? Mm -hmm, sir. Great. So all right, uh, all right. I'll probably be on a. Uh, I'll probably be in a future meeting then. Great, thank Hopefully you. Hopefully with a little more progress. All righty. Thank you, Charlie. I appreciate it. You're welcome, sure.
Be careful out there. Oh yes. Actually, it's just starting to kind of rain a little. A little bit as it's walking in. Oh. So it's gotta be slick. <laughs> and frosty in the morning. Great. <laughs> So I have a couple of things left on the list here. Um, Zoning Economic Development Act, um, that uh, about a month ago now, the governor had signed legislation on a, that is a sort of an omnibus bill on a number of subjects, but it included changes in Chapter 40A, the state's zoning law. Um, but it, there's no immediate need for any changes locally, but I've notified the planning board and the ZBA that the statute does change the voting requirements for approval of certain bylaws and special permits, but also a lack of high density residential zoning near the rail station may affect future grant opportunities for the town. And there are changes in definitions in chapter 40A that may conflict with the town's definitions. It's nothing immediate we have to do, but for instance, if they, someone came in for an accessory um, apartment, in-law, whatever, and the accessory uses uh, structure over here is the chapter 40A, and we've got a different definition. Are they coming in under the chapter 40A definition? Are they coming in under ours? If we said no, or we said yes under ours, could someone appeal saying, well, they made the bad decision because it's, here's the state's definition. So I've informed them of this, and it's in the, uh, unless the board tells you to do something else, unlike with the floodplain, where we need, do need to get something done, um, unless the board tells you to do something with it, it's with them at this point. But like I said, there's no immediate need to do anything. I'm not, wouldn't certainly say that they have to get something done for this coming May. But they have the material. Um, I sent them an analysis from KP Law, also from the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development on the high density residential area zoning. So they have the information. Um, if they needed to get a copy of the actual changes, I believe I gave them a link to that also. So on the high, on the high, uh, density. high density, that's 15 units per, per acre. acre. Right, yeah. So maybe, yeah, they, high can density do, maybe they can do one acre and have 14 acres around for the septic systems that they're gonna need. Well, we'll see what happens in that. Um, Department of Housing Community Development needs to promulgate um, regulations or guidance based because the legislature wasn't specific as to how big an area has to be zoned, things like that. So we'll wait to see what happens. And, and, it's and nice we can't count the mobile fire. No, it's not near the rail station. It's, it has to be within a half mile of the rail station. And it's nice that they're cutting the service now yes. and then adding all these requirements. So they're gonna move people out here mm -hmm. and then not give them service into Boston. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been going on since they opened. I, I, it's always been sporadic. It keeps getting cut and no service on the weekends. Anyway, that's another thing for another day. One of the comments on here is Twin Lakes is within half a mile. The thing, as I mentioned, Long Lake, what's the half a mile? If it's road, it isn't. If it's bird flying, maybe it is. But we'll see what they say. Um, on the regional dispatch, sorry, traffic safety committee, new line item for school traffic lights will be proposed by the uh, traffic safety committee to add into the uh, general budget line items. Um, that was specifically, I guess, for the, both the, tra the school safety lights and what the crosswalks, Tom? Yes. Is the idea? So maintenance of the light, of the and, lighting. And, 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 and potential hazard areas for uh, lighted stop signs. Yeah. For instance, Pine right. Street across yep. 106, yep. which is a terrible spot. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. um, there weren't any uh, speed limits or size uh, changes recommended for the Home Street Route 36 that I brought up about the thickly settled. So that's where that went. Yeah. Uh, regional dispatch, I may have mentioned this uh, earlier, but just to confirm, the assessment will be stable for this coming year for 22. Um, we'll see at the 150,000 plus the additional money we always set aside for equipment and repairs, um, but we do expect the assessment to increase during fiscal 23, but we'll get there. Also, we'll have a new agreement, um, even if it's one year for this coming year, we'll have a new um, memorandum of understanding for, with the district, because they're trying to get into a particular enterprise fund for the district, even though it still be run through Duxbury. Um, and as part of that, they'll 
sign new agreements with various towns that are in that. Uh, and then I just need to go in briefly to uh, executive session on negotiations, but not legal matters. Charlie, did we do the ambulance abatement? Did... Oh. I missed that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, let me put that in my notes. So the amount, I think, is that in the agenda? The so, amount? Yeah, the amount is $78,872.05. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can I make a motion to make the abatement for that amount? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I kept thinking we handled it when we did the uh, commitment, but that was the abatement. Yeah. Yeah. I moved that we go into executive session. What what matters are we doing? Um, we're going to be Contract. doing the patrol officer negotiations and the mixed unit negotiations. Okay. So in that, because um, as discussing strategy with yes. respect to litigation, oh, not litigation, because no. we're not going for litigation. Union negotiations. For union negotiations, and an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. A second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. So, yes. Mr. Millius, yes. All right, folks, thank you. We're going into executive session to take care of some business. We will not be conducting any business when we come out of executive session. We will just adjourn. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Stay safe.